Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new show with the one and only Grandmaster Surya Shekhar Ganguly. Surya, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sagar. Surya, now now you are uh, an experienced streamer. Last time when we when we invited you to the show, you were about to begin uh, your YouTube channel, and now you have already four uh, videos uh, with Anand. One video of your own, amazing! Yeah, well, how things have changed in the last ten days. Sure, sure. Uh, I I did not know that I'll go. I'll be streaming that much. But um, you know, also I enjoyed doing this. Like uh, interviewing Anand and Aruna was a pure pleasure. Yeah, and they were so nice. You know, Anand stayed for four episodes, and uh, I could um, I could interview him in, in a very nice way. Like I could also ask him many things that was not asked to him before. Absolutely, so I mean, I mean, it was a joy. It was a complete pleasure to to listen to it. In fact, uh, sometimes uh, when when Anand's interviews happen. There are many questions which have already been asked before, but you being s- so close to him, there were so many new ones, uh, and and it was a pleasure for the entire chess community to listen to it. Also, your your YouTube right. channel is is picking up right now. It already has over three thousand subscribers. Yeah, well, yeah, I want to make it uh, slightly different. Like, um, you know, I want to. Um, uh, Show something that has not been done before. So also, I'm trying to get uh, different players and you know interview them in a slightly different way, and then going through their uh, n- not entire game, but few positions, and to understand how they are making decisions. And my next guest is also very special. So it's uh, it's Aronian Levon. One yeah? second, let me show the people what it is about. So the next guest on Surya's show. Is none other than Levon Aronian. Amazing. I mean, uh, first I thought Anand. Wow, you started off with a bang. What's next? And then comes Aronian. <laughs> yeah. So also like all this, uh, you know, like uh, Levon. I know Levon since 1992. We played the uh, age group uh, tournament together, World Under 10. So I know him since then. So. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to do an interview with him. So he's your childhood friend, yeah, like amazing. And and actually, uh, Levon hardly does too many public shows, so in a way, uh, this would be so much fun to to listen to him. Absolutely, and you'll also be amazed to know his uh, you know his wide wide range of interest in arts and music and you know all sorts of things. It amazing was... personality. Yeah, yeah, and and judging from the way Surya prepares for his shows, uh, the meticulous approach he has with all the questions and all, it's going to be a complete treat. So Surya, this is something which each and every one, every chess lover has to bookmark on their uh, calendars. Fourth of July at one thirty p.m. Coming to today, sure, Surya. Yeah, people are worried. They are saying. If we do nothing, wouldn't that lead to a loss? What is this art of doing nothing? Well, you know who is my who is my guru in in this art of doing nothing, like whom I look forward to when I when I see his games. Uh-huh. Uh, it's actually Karpov. Uh, no, more modern generation. Modern generation. Uh, no, uh, I mean, it's un- ah, wait, 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 one minute. Hari Krishna. Well. To some extent, and also Anish Giri. Anish Giri. Yeah, if you if you look at his games, he is peaceful. He is not doing anything, but he is winning. And even when you know he is opening a YouTube channel, he does nothing. His viewers just grows. You know, he he. So he is my guru. He just does nothing, and you know, things somehow gets better and better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Anish Giri just started his uh, YouTube channel recently. uh and he hasn't updated even one one video yet and he already has what 6000 subscribers sure <laughs> so <laughs> so so that's how art of doing nothing or also on the chess board yeah art of doing nothing <laughs> okay uh well surya just a second i think i have uh, some some uh, issues with my stream um uh, with with some lag so i'll just okay. 
okay guys maybe there was a small lag in between i hope that it is now fixed uh, and and there are no issues uh, as such so hopefully everything is back on track uh, i would like to ask the viewers to uh, follow and subscribe to surya's channel the link is in the description and get ready for the amazing shows with levon aronian and also he has one more show coming up tomorrow which i will mention about it at the end of this uh, video so surya uh, coming back to our topic of today art of doing nothing uh, anish kiri the inspiration and what about the on the chess board so okay uh, we will see few games uh -huh. the first the first one is uh, it was a very important game uh, we were playing in uh, uh, bangkok open and uh, wang hao was basically crushing the tournament okay and he was leading and uh, he was leading by half a point and he had the best tie break which meant uh, if he draws last round he wins the championship mm. i was half a point behind and i am playing white against wang hao the final round and it's a game i sort of uh, have to win in order to you know uh, go for the championship also in general i have this attitude if i'm uh, you know if i'm white and in such a situation I'll, it doesn't matter whom i am playing i just by default i, I will play for uh, you know win right i not i not agree for a short draw or something but so uh, your opponent is like the super solid wang hao who is uh, 2700 plus and also you know recently qualified to the candidate so very strong gm sure well but in 2015 he she did not qualify for candidates but nevertheless i mean he was 2700 plus and you know he was in world top 10 at some point and yeah, so on yeah yeah so definitely very strong player so yeah so he played petrov the game started with petrov so e4 e5 knight f3 knight, knight f6 uh, on that yeah. note and i would like to welcome padmini raut who's in the chat uh, and uh, yeah when when surya's here i am sure a lot of uh, top players are going to join in uh, and guys i would like to make a humble request to all the viewers to please focus on the chess element to to learn from what surya is teaching you because what he is showing here is extremely high quality content and what he's going to teach you is something that not even uh, a top player can easily express because Surya, as I believe, is one of the finest chess uh, tutors and explain uh, the guy who explains chess. So please don't spam the chat with unnecessary uh, comments and just focus on chess. And if you have something important to ask, please do so. Okay, Surya. So yeah, so uh, so you know, Sagar, like if um, prior to uh, like a couple of years before this Bangkok tournament, if somebody would have told me, like, you know, hypothetical situation where you are playing, a, 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 let's say, a 2700 and you know Petrov might come and you want to play for win, uh, and you would play the variation which happened in the game, hmm. I would have never believed him because uh, my nature was always like to play the main lines and to play very direct and, uh, you know, to, to basically uh, go for the most complex situation. Also, as you have seen, like mostly uh, in all your stream, also all my games are usually very, com you know, direct and uh, combinative. Yeah, you are always but, doing something. Like you are attacking or creating weaknesses, probing, so on. Yeah, but then I also had some training session with Peter Leko and uh, my f very good friend Pentala Hari Krishna, mm -hmm. and uh, they spoiled me a bit. <laughs> so. <laughs> So this game, you can see, uh, this was my winning attempt for the, the for this crucial round. So I took knight e5. Knight takes. D6. Yeah, d6, knight f3. Mm -hmm. Keep going, yeah. Knight e4 and queen e2. <laughs> and, and actually, after queen e2, queen e7, uh, this queen exchange line, uh, I mean, you, you have to exchange the queens. Very, you don't, very you don't see this. Yeah, yeah, you don't see this, you know, playing for win. And as I said, the tournament situation demanded me to win. So I was genuinely playing for win. and uh, But this was one of the ways to do so. So, okay, knight c3, black, white wants to play bishop uh, e3, uh, given a chance. So 
black text queen takes e2 yeah take bishop e7 castle castle okay my my question here is that you have actually gained in a way two tempi right uh, correct, you, correct, you are correct. You start the game with one extra tempo as well, but you have gained one more. Do you think that is significant to gain an advantage here, considering that the entire, like the pawn structure is absolutely symmetrical? Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me put it this way: it's uh, essentially equal, but uh, the game is, uh, you know, wide open. It's not like the game is over. To give you an example, I mean, uh, I prepared this line with Hari Krishna. And uh, one of the game that was very amazing for uh, me, uh, for us, was Nakamura versus uh, Anish. Okay. Where even even a player of Anish Giris, you know, with uh, his kind of understanding, he got uh, slowly outplayed. Also, there are some very nice games. Shirov Topalov comes into mind. So you know, the viewers can later Google uh, in, in, or search in, in this opening. Space. In this opening. In this opening. In this particular position, Shirov uh, Topalov and also uh, Nakamura Giri. Okay, so two games for you guys to have a look at uh, to learn this opening from white side. Shirov Topalov and Nakamura Giri. Fantastic. Okay. So castle, castle. I played h3 to get to bishop e3 at some point. He plays a6. So that the bishop won't be harassed with knight g4. Uh, At some point, yeah. Yeah, a6. Yes. Well, he is playing a6 because he wants to get his knight to c6 and he wants to avoid knight b5. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I play a3 also. Oh, sorry, I play rook e1 first. Knight c6. And a3. So I remember, uh, believe it or not, this was our preparation uh, for uh, me and Hari. So we prepared this and I, I even remember where we prepared. We prepared this in Bangalore, one of the training sessions that we were doing. And we thought it's it's interesting. I mean, it's just a position that uh, there is still a lot of life. It, it may look boring, but as you will see in the game, it's not so boring at all. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, you know, I have played the exchange Slav many times and I know that symmetrical positions are never drawish. But still, mm -hmm. in that position, I usually have a better bishop. You know, like in, in exchange Slav, many times white has... So just, uh, for, uh, to, just to show the point, like d4, d5, c4, c6, uh, cd, cd, knight c3, uh, let's say knight f6. Uh, bishop f4, knight c6, e3, and many times, you know, uh, black goes like this. And and you at least have something to brag about when your bishop is better than uh, the opponent's bishop on c8. But when we come right. to your game here, it, it seems like all the pieces are kind of same. Like your bishop is a little bit passive, his is passive, yours is slightly going to be active, so can he. So is his piece. So what is working here, right, for white? At the moment, I think these two tempos, it kind of slightly mattered. Like, as you will see in the games. So he played rook e8, like, perfectly natural move. I played bishop e3. Yeah. Now, here, here is the first advantage that I have h3 extra, so there is no knight g4 business. And for instance, to start with, if he plays bishop e6, then I can have knight g5, bishop f3, and, you know, bring the knight to e4. So... You know, very, very tiny uh, details, yeah. but st still something. So he played bishop d7, trying to avoid this. Mm -hmm. I mean, trying to discourage this knight g5, knight e4. And again, this two tempos, yeah, like, so I played d4 here. And the problem is he cannot play uh, d5 because I have bishop f4. Or knight e5, actually knight e5 even. Knight you know, giving some... E yeah, giving him some immediate, uh, asking immediate question and bishop f3 is coming next. So, if not d5, he can play, uh, let's say, bishop f5 after uh, d4. Yeah. Here he can play bishop f5. Uh, but I have d5, knight e5, knight d4. And now if black could play bishop g6 or bishop h7, it would be fine. But this does not work because of f4, f5. Ah. So, for instance, if you go back to move number 13, where I played bishop e3. Yeah. Yeah, let's say if black wanted to do this, if black played d5 here, I can play bishop f4. 
and after d5 knight e4 uh, knight d5 unlike his my bishop is not getting trapped or anything i can just put it on h2 or you know somewhere <laughs> very so, subtle so point that's, yeah very subtle point so basically this meant uh, after 14th move d4 he cannot play uh, d5 so and there is no bishop easy so now already it's like I I won't say it's like advantage or something, but you know at least some things are changing. Mm. And uh, during a game, I think it is not very important what is the computer evaluation or you know whether it's equal or something. As long as there is life in the position, that's good enough to play for. Yeah, yeah. Life. So he played bishop f8. Okay. Yeah. So now bishop g5. Yeah. And I think. You know, I also felt at some point that uh, probably Wang Hao, psychologically, maybe he felt I was quite happy with draw. Mm. I mean, imagine maybe if Hari or you know someone like uh, yeah, let's say Anish played this queen e2, then he would be more cautious because then he would know that no, this guy is definitely not playing for draw. So maybe I don't know, but maybe uh, somewhere he felt uh, the game will end pretty soon. Mm -hmm. He thought that you so would he... offer draw any moment, but. You had uh, quite aggressive intentions. Yeah. So takes takes. Bishop d3. Rook e1. Rook e1. So now this is a good point to actually stop uh, and evaluate uh, one small thing. So when I when I looked at the position, uh, I realized there is one problem for Black, which which is which he is unable to solve at least in near future. Hmm. Actually, two. So one is his f8 bishop. Where is it going? Well, I would love to if play d5 and activate I, it. But whenever you play d5, I have bishop f4. Mm -hmm. So you, if you can make two moves to, at a time, then you are probably doing fine. But d5 is not happening due to bishop f4. Yeah. Like, yeah. Then the other thing is, if you play g6, bishop g7, it doesn't help. Because I'll play c3 and still the piece formation is not so great. Yeah, it won't be very like, good on g7. Yeah, it's yeah. And the second thing is, uh, I am not playing for the. This is not an advantage that I have the e file because that he can uh, change anytime he wants. My advantage is actually space. So if I have to make next three moves, three four moves, I'll probably play g4, king g2, king g3, c3. You know, s slowly start gaining space on uh, both sides. I think most of the viewers who are watching this, when you talk about space, first thing that would come to mind is d5 and c4, you know, like gain more space that way. But but you suggested right. going g4, king g2, c3. Why is that? Right. So, uh, so I think it's, it, as the topic says, yeah, like the art of doing nothing. <laughs> so basically... <laughs> Basically, uh, you are asking Black that, yeah, show me your plan. H how you are going to wait? Let's say I have these moves, yeah, g4, king, g2, king, g3, c3, uh, maybe h4 later. Yeah. I'm just asking, what, what are your moves? Mm. What, is, what is Black going to do? He cannot play d5. There is no b5, a5 happening. So how are you going to bring out your pieces? So basically, so, the art of doing nothing is, in fact, trying to see what are your opponent's active possibilities and having a plan against them. Like for example, black has a d5 move in hand, but you have already prepared bishop f4 for that. And then slowly sure. improving your position. So it's like uh, advanced prophylaxis, yeah, some kind of trying to stop. Sure, opponent. sure, sure, sure. I mean, out of doing nothing cannot be like you start playing king h1, king g1, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, in the game, he played h6. h6, yeah. Bishop d2. Now he played bishop e6. Now, so he is basically, he wants to, he would love to change some minor pieces. Mm. So I'm happy to change rooks, but I don't want to change minor pieces at the moment. So, so if he would have played rook e8, you, oh, I'll be very happy. You were very happy to take, take and g4. And g4. And you just don't, and, you just don't think of the future, like where to break through. You just, Keep making moves. You, yeah, useful and moves. also, yeah, and also, it's not clear, you know, like what, how Black is going to play. I mean, 
both the bishops are not having any concrete future actually something similar happened in the game so we will see what happens after the rook got exchanged okay because okay also you know i'm not playing with some absolute uh, badger or anyone he's a great player so yeah, yeah. He, he also yeah so he played bishop e6 threatening bishop d5 so i am doing a prophylaxis here i play c3 because now bishop d5 i can play knight h4 so bishop d5 doesn't lead anywhere and d4 is guarded okay he, yeah so he played knight a5 trying to get some kind of activity but uh, he can only put the knight either on c4 or on b3 and if he puts it on b3 i can put my bishop on e3 if he puts it on c4 i can put it on put my bishop on uh, c1 so so either way i don't have to bother about this yeah if he comes to c4 you can go back to then c1 i can go back to c1 yeah so now i play g4 aha uh -huh. so bishop d5 <clears throat> so king g2 very nice so he plays knight b3 attacking the bishop bishop e3 and now c4 is threatened so he plays b5 which is understandable so surya at the right moment when you begin a new <coughs> plan of doing nothing if you can uh -huh. uh, ask the viewers as to what uh, they can do that would be nice because i think slowly i'm beginning to understand what this art of doing nothing means yeah like you have to slowly improve yeah you are slowly constantly improving the position okay so i play I played King G three, mm -hmm. Rook E eight, and I played Bishop F four. So uh, yeah, and he played Rook E one, and he offered me a draw here. Okay. But uh, yeah, oh, I mean, there is there is no reason for White to agree for a draw because you remember when we started evaluating the position, I said uh, uh, the problem in Black's position is F eight Bishop and his King side. Uh, you know, like his King side will be a little bit passive. and that problem is still still there like the e7 uh, the f8 bishop is still still passive so i took knight take e1 uh, knight takes e1 yeah so <clears throat> yeah now uh, you know there is this funny thing like uh, one of the very classic book that i read in recent time was Uh, girlfriend's positional decision making i recommend every single chess player to you know uh, read this book okay. i think it's it's a <clears throat> it's a fascinating book so there at some point uh, i think in, even in the introduction he says uh, girlfriend says uh, that if you have space advantage it's natural to exchange you know rooks and then you can uh, expand expand more hmm. the funny thing is i never knew this I, i i maybe some soviet school or something but i had no idea that you know changing rooks kind of helps to expand because then your king is sort of safe oh but in the game in in this game in this game i remember that i was quite happy when the rooks got changed you know when rooks are exchanged my first feeling is that so much dynamism goes out of the position that you know <coughs> that the drawing margin kind of grows i don't know if why this has come into my head or maybe it's because of the games that i have played over a period of time but that's wrong yeah that way of thinking i think any kind of uh, generalization is uh, after a certain level it doesn't work yeah. like uh, the moment you want to level that yeah this is because chess is also very fast yeah so like every position has got its own unique uh, features so i think in general this uh, to say this is right this is wrong it doesn't make sense because everything will have an exception yeah yeah well for, for the viewers who are asking which book uh, surya recommended gelfand's book boris gelfand uh, 2012 world championship challenger uh, positional decision making i guess if uh, yeah uh, as the uh, moderator has put the link uh, it's available in the chess base india shop and you can get it from there yeah <clears throat> so he played knight a5 here uh so he wants to bring his knight to c4 but uh, again uh, as we said before knight c4 is always answered with uh, bishop c1 yeah so i played knight c2 yeah knight c4 bishop c1 happened so you see black is jumping a lot but uh, his essential problem is still there 
yeah. i am not claiming this i am not claiming this position is you know clearly better for white or something nothing like that i mean the game was uh, if you put on computer game was uh, a drawish for long time but uh, that doesn't mean anything now if uh, i have to think of an idea for white i am thinking mm-hmm. of trying to go f4 h4 h5 is that correct yeah h4 h5 if i get a chance i would definitely play h4 h5 because if i can play h4 h5 then that f8 bishop is not coming anywhere so he played the uh, knight b6 and i wanted to play h4 h5 this was my first thought but then i found another way to restrict the bishop on f8 maybe you can ask the audience uh, what is it okay guys uh, time to put your thinking cap on uh white to move here how to limit this bishop uh how can you do that so white to move it's actually not difficult i i don't think any of the move in this particular game is difficult but just again as the topic goes like winning by doing nothing almost i think uh, the mindset with which you are playing is very difficult to emulate you know like slowly playing and improving uh so that's already not easy yeah but also if you look historically like if you look at even all championship matches right like when they had to win a game like even kasparov karpov let's say yeah yeah all this uh, critical moment when they had to win they always went for a long game so i think w- one thing that i would like to say like when you are playing a tournament where you have to win like you know like last round let's say you want to win a game i think this attitude is very good that actually this attitude is ideal for every game if if it is possible to do hmm. that you go to the board and you are ready to play until king versus king that is your aim yeah this is so. this is a fantastic uh, advice because you know uh, surya i just wanted to show you something there was i i clearly remember that i was playing my uh, i mean i had no im norms at that point Uh, and i was playing against G- grandmaster lakshman and if i uh-huh. won that game uh, then i would get an uh, im norm and i was so tensed i was so tensed in that game that i actually just simply blundered uh, my rook uh, you know i just wanted to uh, show you this uh, position uh, to you and the viewers because it just is so much different from the way surya approached this game so you know uh it was i was white in this game mm-hmm. and when when lakshman uh, came here with the bishop to h3 i was so nervous i thought that i can't do anything that i played the move bishop h1 oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and just gave up my rook just like that i was like i must do something if i want to score and i am no you know like and i'm ready to even give up an exchange to get this bishop and of course i just was crushed in a few more moves so have you noticed ever that uh, for many even young players also they will be trying for ages to get gm norms like even the young players or any player mm. but as soon as they make their final gm norm immediately they start making gm norms one after another yeah so basically because that want is gone you are not wanting anymore so you are playing more freely and once you start playing more freely you simply play better so it's more about the mindset than the ability actually hey, everything is about mind nothing else <laughs> okay <laughs> so so we have a lot of suggestions knight e3 is one move f4 is another move that has been suggested g5 has been suggested by a lot of people uh, ilam parthi says knight e3 and knight f5 to stop all counter play uh, that's it ah that's it just a second just a second the screen so what happened i have no idea how uh, the no 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 in obs you have to uh, do one thing uh, just go to my game with wanga and uh, do maximize and restore yeah now you got it man i i never never imagined the day when surya would help me to fix my technical issues <laughs> <laughs> surya you are becoming an expert streamer now yeah so uh um, so i don't know if if people could not see the board uh, that i was showing uh, for my game against uh, lakshman 
but uh, just to just to very quickly if you guys missed it this was the position that i was talking about and here i moved my bishop back to h1 which was a horrible move because i wanted to win at all cost and there i lost uh, an exchange i just gave it up and uh, lost the game so uh -huh. <clears throat> coming back to this position here knight b6 is met with yeah so knight knight d3 yeah yeah fantastic. bishop b3 Bishop b3 and knight f5. Bishop b3 and knight f5, yeah. So basically, yeah, now king side is completely stuck. Nothing moves on king side. As long as that knight stays there, nothing moves. So what Wang Hao played is also the move that I expected. I mean, there is nothing else to do. This knight has to be eliminated. So he plays knight d5. Uh, and if he goes say bishop e6 and takes it with the bishop that would be pretty bad yeah like two bishops that is very bad sure sure that is very bad also with this pawns on a6 b5 and uh, that doesn't make sense right i mean you would like to uh, keep the bishops right at least change the knight with uh, your own knight hmm. so so you played knight d5 and now i cannot uh, i don't want to really uh, you know, he is losing a couple of tempos to do this. So, I found another idea here. Okay. Shall we ask? The... Is it? Uh, because, because I think what you are, what you are showing is, is very difficult to, to kind of master. Yeah. Like, uh... yeah, it's actually also debatable. Like if I, whatever I played, if it is the, you know, yeah. because if you put in computer for him, probably even uh, you know, playing a move like right now, let's say King H2 or uh, anything, it, it will be showing similar evaluation. So I, I'm not sure uh, from that perspective if it makes sense. But yeah, from practical point of view, one can think right. what to do, right. like yeah. how to, how to create something. So so guys, don't look at the engine here. It's more about developing this ability to play. As Vishnu also pointed out yesterday. Engines are very good at solving problems, but not creating problems. And here what Surya is doing is creating problems for his opponent. So your task is now to create some problem for black because black has the simple idea of 97 trying to exchange this knight on f5. So how do you create more issues? White to move. Mm -hmm. Amit Roy also Nihilesh nice uh Nick uh, Amit Roy and Nihilesh say Bishop E four. Uh, Nicola Grecusio says BD2 waiting. <laughs> uh, Akshay Mohan says F4. Chandrabhan Mishra says King F4. Mihir says G5. Shiv Shom says Bishop E4. 97, 97, Bishop E7, Bishop B7. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, basically that's what happened in the game. This is what you play. Uh, yeah, I played Bishop E4, but. Still, as I said, I mean, still position is actually, objectively speaking, black should hold. A knight e7, takes, takes, bishop b7, a5, bishop c6, and bishop c4. Oh. So now, black kind of solved uh, his, you know, this. Uh, he could eliminate the knight on f5. But actually, still, he did not solve his uh, e7 bishop issue. Yeah. Like, that bishop is still passive. So, imagine... So, okay, now I play... Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, I was thinking bishop g5, but you always have f4. So... Correct. Uh, also, I start with h4 now. Ah, you first start with h4. And this is a very serious positional threat. I am threatening to play h5, which uh, obviously he would not like. Please explain this thing, which is so obvious as to, like... Why is it so dangerous to allow this pawn to come to h5? Well, once the pawn comes to h5, every time you also have to bother about, you know, all sorts of uh, f4, g5. And in general, you can never uh, breathe properly. Okay. And 
and yeah it makes sense like you're already black is already stuck on queen side if he is also stuck on king side then it will be very difficult to uh, you know find some active play mm mm so he played g5 which is absolutely uh, the most natural move here yeah kind yeah. of forced yeah you can say forced forced yeah yeah and now also my move is forced because let's say if i play h5 yeah he can then play d5 and next move he can play a4 and for now this will be a complete fortress like i'll not be able to break through so something like f4 here f f6 Ah. The the problem is you will not have your entry for the king. Ah, okay. So here my king is stopped by this pawn, and overall I can't get in. Yeah, this this will be some kind of fortress. So I took h g five. Okay. He takes h g five, and now I had a choice. Like, imagine if I can get my king to e four in one go here, then this is very close to winning. Hmm. I I would be surprised if it is uh, winning if I get my king to e4. Okay. But the problem pr problem is for king f3 he will play d5. So uh, here I had to take a call and this was an easy call. I don't think there is any option. Yeah. So if if I play king f3 as in yeah 37 king f3 d5 black play d5 plus d5 and now I have to play a4. There is just no other choice because I cannot allow. I have to keep some side open at least. Yeah. but this I, this i was not sure like i i did not like this in general that my king is not coming to e4 yeah even i don't know even b4 let's say i, I was not sure here there is still some play but uh, it no 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 it, so, sorry sorry you cannot play b4 because uh, g5 hangs so you have to take b into f4 yeah because here a b uh, c b a b means a pawn is passed and yeah, if you take bishop b4 is bishop, bishop b4 then uh, g5 is hanging here So that's the reason yeah. why uh, you have to take. And... Yeah, but this position I was not. Uh, it was not an easy decision. Should do I have more chance here, or what I played in the game? I felt what I played in the game keeps more practical chances. So now I am getting my king to uh, e4. Yeah, he played. He played king g7. I played king f3. So I think this, this at this point it was his first mistake that he decided not to wait. So uh, I think Black holds this position just by waiting. But I had a I had an interesting plan. I'll I'll tell you what is what was my idea. It it does not work, but uh, at least Black has to be precise. So my first plan was to put my C1 bishop to B8. That he cannot stop. B8 here. Correct. I can ah okay from here yeah of course like this yeah. okay correct so once i put my bishop on b8 he will have to play bishop d8 yeah. there is nothing else he can do absolutely then yeah then i will play okay i will, i also as you met some point he will play a4 uh, but it, it doesn't matter then i will play king e4 yeah bishop d7 bishop f5 okay and at some point try to get uh, you know king d4 and bishop to d3 and then change that bishop but the moment you come to d4 doesn't isn't there bishop f6 check correct then you come back uh, bishop e3 and still c7 is hanging king e3 yeah then i have to go king back king e3 and then bishop d3 and after so, changing the bishops that position uh, if you, uh, no that is lost if you change the bishop then c4, c4 is happening c4. because your d8 yeah but this whole thing it somehow does not work like uh, we can make some moves but uh, uh, let's say okay uh, just just make some moves okay, let's say king okay i'm going to play bishop f6 so bishop, bishop e3 uh, a4 so can i do this okay bishop yeah, a7 yeah bishop a7 bishop e7 bishop somewhere bishop, bishop b8 here yeah and now king e4 uh yeah i think also uh, there is some issues with even let's say if he plays king f6 Yeah. And uh, okay, King D4. And I'm just assuming that I get everything like uh, King G7, Bishop D7. Let's say King G6. I'm just cooperating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bishop Bishop F5 check. King F6. Yeah. No, just to say, just to show that if you even if you get everything, and play Bishop D3, and still there is C5 check. 
no 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 there is c5 check uh, bishop d3 loses that by the way loses because then this, i'll play c4 this, and i'll collect and then c4 yeah because at some point my a pawn will queen very fast because your bishop is uh, passive but here what but there is c5 c5 yeah yeah d6 bishop b6 check <laughs> and king e4 <laughs> oh d5 check and it ends in a draw so so essentially it does not work but the thing is uh, now if you go back to move 38 J just uh, to make it clear for the viewers that the draw is by this way uh, here yeah, yeah. you have to take take and it's an opposite color bishop and it's a draw okay yeah now if you go back to move 38 where uh, he played uh, bishop b3 the thing is yeah just when i played king f3 yeah, with the with his bishop on c4 yeah he played it's, bishop b3 I think, giving a pawn uh, on b5 yeah but then he will get the d5 so what i'm saying is it's also not easy because during a game one is never sure whether that is the fortress or not hmm. whether it is drawing or not so if you constantly give them some small decision and it it can get slightly uncomfortable even for very strong players yeah absolutely i mean you need to uh, when you are watching this video here and you are looking at it from the comfort of your home uh, also nice uh, maybe some people have their ac on and stuff it is easy to say oh this was better and there but on the board when you are sweating it's move number 38 time is ticking down the championship is at stake and when your opponent keeps on asking you to make these little decisions like surya was doing it's not easy it's not at all easy yeah so i played king e4 plays bishop c2 check king e3 and again bishop b3 yeah so i i improved my king position now i took bishop takes b5 he takes on b d5 and now b4 so trying to create you know some outside passer yeah obviously he doesn't want to give me that so he plays c6 bishop e2 and finally he solves his uh, bishop problem so he plays bishop d8 mm. so c c4 let bishop e6 so bishop e2 check i think he played uh, f6 yeah and bishop c3 again uh, asking him to decide do you want to take uh, a takes b4 then i'll take with the bishop and i'll have an outside pass pawn yeah he played a move which uh, i think still already white has created some sort of winning chances here so he played bishop b6 uh, which i think only helps it now c5 so yeah he must take yeah and now take on a5 bishop a7 and again like art of doing nothing comes into picture okay so so basically at some point you want to activate your e2 bishop mm -hmm. so in order to do so you need to protect your g4 pawn so f3 <laughs> f3 just just steady chess yeah no hurry no no rush yeah no, no rush, rush at all because now this particular position his king will be stuck for the f6 pawn and his a7 bishop will be stuck for the a5 pawn which means if i can change uh, the light square bishop i should be winning immediately hmm. and also if he plays c4 then bishop d4 uh, also should give you a winning sure, position sure 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 that's what happened few few moves later okay so he played king f7 okay bishop d1 I'm just changing a diagonal slowly. So he played bishop uh, c4. I played bishop c2. Still not showing my intention. Yeah, like I can go to d3, e4, a4. Everything is uh, open. Hmm. So he played bishop a6 now. And this is the point I could for force him to do one more consideration. I went bishop a4. The idea is okay he cannot change light square bishop because then he loses yeah because f6 g5 pawn will stick yeah this i'll just yeah position is I'll losing king e4 king e6 and just wait just ask black the move and at some point yeah perfect 
and either either you can enter here or here and if he goes yeah. bishop b6 then bishop a5 yeah maybe that yeah yeah you, yeah yeah you just slowly maneuver and he'll uh, yeah yeah and then play bishop c7 which play bishop c7 and come back if c4 then again come back yeah nice bishop a5 yeah and that's so, winning so bishop a4 he played uh, c4 check and uh, then bishop 4 C5 bishop C3. Now his both both his bishops are bad now. <laughs> Look at how, so, exactly. how these two pawns have blocked these two bishops here. Amazing. Yeah. So he played king E6. Mm -hmm. Now he wants to come to you know activate his king. So bishop C6. Stop that. F5. Now he's a bit desperate. So here also again restrictions comes into play. So G F five, King F five, and drag the king further. So Bishop D seven check. He must go to G six, and block the king again. Bishop E six. So now king is blocked. Bishop is blocked. Basically now nothing happened. Just absolutely nothing moves. It's so unbelievable that the material, in spite of it being equal. the quality of the pieces is just so different like both these bishops are so active both the bishops are passive this is an outside passer much more dangerous than this pawn uh, i mean surya has like a yeah. like a magician got everything in place yeah but he found a very devil like uh, very tricky idea here mm -hmm. he played uh, bishop f4 so you see he wants to change the other bishop he wants to get his bishop to b4 he wants to get bishop c1 bishop a3 bishop b4 oh so you know like also when you are playing a strong player they will they will constantly pose some kind of uh, counter and problem mm -hmm. they are not going to you know they will resist very hard so okay i played a4 uh, bishop c1 and king c4 oh, sorry king d5 So now I'm thinking, what was my intention for uh, Bishop A3? Maybe King C6. Ah, King C6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop the yeah. yeah, King C6, and that Bishop is getting trapped. Yeah, sure. So he played Bishop B7 check. King takes C4. He took on F3. I took on C5. And yeah, he cannot stop the pawn. I think he played G4 first. So Bishop D4. You control this diagonal once and for all. Bishop A3 check. He gave. King B six, G three, A six G two, and now Bishop B seven, Bishop B two. I think he played. Yeah. yeah, and Bishop G one. Yeah, and King F six, Bishop C six. He resigned. Oh man, what a game! What a what an yeah. unbelievable game, Surya. This was yeah. highest level of uh, art of doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like. as i said in this game particularly there were there were no brilliant moves at all i don't i cannot even tell that you know like this particular move was very good or something it just like you know posing some constant problem and slowly improving the position yeah it was it was simply unbelievable how even in the last position just this a pawn being passed is so strong and this active king you are able to win I think uh, guys you have learned something very very unique today which is sometimes you don't have to do too much just m minutely keep improving your position stop your opponent's ideas and that is enough what a game yeah and also like okay my opponent was like 100 ratings more she had 100 ratings more than me okay but uh, I think it all that matters is attitude like you are ready to play you know like king king and uh, you just uh, don't bother about whether this position is drawish or anything you just keep making good moves that that's all you are supposed to do in a chess game yeah and also not to not to forget that Su with this win surya actually won the bangkok open in 2015 uh, very uh, no big... well 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 i actually did not win this one i won the 2016 one by beating panvel in the last round okay this one it happened so that uh, nigel won on uh, third board i think he bet diptan gosh mm. 
and uh, in tie break nigel was better so we shared the championship but he had better tie break so he won i came second wow. but the next year i won okay okay so joint first and then next year you win uh, you finished the uh, first uh, so i just am reading a few comments here anirudh naganur says such an instructive game we have setu raman here who says lovely game well if you can actually oh, thanks, if you can actually uh, make your fellow gm who is also 2650 rated uh, say that this is lovely then this is something definitely special surya lakanti top class mayur gondalekar fantastic game arjun kateyat what a game yaar beautiful shiv shom unbelievable amazing uh rachit nimje what a game akshay patel amazing end game i mean uh, it is i think everyone is just stunned with the level of beauty in this game amazing play surya well as i said like i got uh, infected by hari and uh, leko when i started working with them i also realized that chess can be played in a slightly different way yeah yeah uh, and equally effective uh, yeah absolutely so shall we look at the next game yes which one maybe we'll look at the kazgalayev one first okay let's look at murtaz kazgalayev uh, he is i think number 1 uh, was at some point number 1 player of kazakhstan now in the top 3 perhaps uh, well setu setu was playing beside me i, I don't know setu maybe can confirm the did he play as kazakhstan in world team uh Setu this is world team championship Astana 2019 India Kazakhstan were you playing this please let us know uh, no no he was playing the tournament that i know i don't know yeah yeah i don't remember if he was, he was playing. playing this particular round or not right i'm just going to um check if there is any audio lag or not i just want to make sure in case if there is i'll fix it uh, guys please let me know setu says with this wonderful game probably you should tell the viewers the four word joke surya do you know the four word joke four word joke maybe ah, yeah four word joke yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i i heard it at four word joke yeah so <laughs> so you know what uh, thanks said for reminding this hmm. and sorry somya for saying this publicly so once in uh, inter petroleum yeah we are uh, traveling and uh, so me at some point uh, uh, we we were discussing about some particular book and uh, uh, there is a book called um, strategic play by uh, jacob agard okay and the, and the introduction is written by me and it's a selection of my game which are like strategic now <laughs> our, now our beloved so me i did not know this okay so so suddenly she asked her uh, i ah, you wrote the introduction <laughs> and, and 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 group of you know like indian oil players are there all of all of us and i'm like yeah oh that's nice which book and i'm like strategic play and so me goes strategic play you <laughs> and you know agar since then whenever i make a strategical mistake i i get so me as face you strategical play no way yeah <laughs> so so me in case you are watching yeah like sometimes i can also play strategic game it's not like i cannot play it at all so me the only way to make uh, surya forget your image uh, whenever he makes a strategical mistake is to tell him that he is a great strategical player as well so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, i i will never forget this uh, you know her expression you you wrote a book on strategy play it's like how dare you <laughs> well i would like to tell the viewers who who are not so well versed with surya's playing style although you saw this as an art of doing nothing game here uh, if you look at some of surya's other games he is predominantly very active player very aggressive sacrificial in nature uh, but it's a trait of a world class player that they always include all styles into their play and so uh, they they are good at everything <laughs> yeah so the, the following game i particularly like uh, on this topic uh, so this happened in uh, kazakhstan one of uh, one of my favorite tournament uh, you know world team we had a fantastic team and uh, nobody imagined that uh, with this team yeah like there was uh, anand was not there vidit was not hari was not there and yet we were inch close for uh, 
you know getting a silver medal even i think last round if i if i win the game against nepo which i was winning yeah and if uh, then uh, or or if setu holds grischuk i think either way we would get uh, get a medal right and if both happened then you know we could get silver medal but uh, Yeah, so I must remind, a- I must tell the viewers that Surya actually performed at an ELO of two eight five zero plus in this tournament and got a gold medal on on the third board. Is that right, Surya? Yeah, yeah, that's on right, the yeah. third board, and uh, he beat many strong players. Yu Yangi was one of them, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, so so Surya, you were white in this game. <clears throat> yeah, so the opening was um, nothing spectacular. It was the Italian D three yeah. bishop e seven castles castles rook e one yeah rook e one D six yeah this this all has been played a number of times A four and there are many plans of what Murtas played is also pretty common uh, to play King H eight with the idea of Knight G eight and F five yeah I like this plan for Black it's quite active and White has to be on his toes. Yeah, white should know what he's doing. Then he's fine, I think. Yeah. So a five, a six. A six is uh, important. Yeah, like if you go knight g eight, then you. White but then a six, yeah. And then sure. you have light square weaknesses uh, here. Yeah, you don't want to like. Why should you get this uh, as black? Yeah. So a six. So now anticipating knight g eight, white plays knight c three, which is also uh, pretty decent. He plays knight g eight. I play knight d5. Plays f5. So, in a way, he's threatening to take and play bishop g4. Yeah, yeah. So first pro- first profile access is h3. Okay. Uh, yeah, he takes twice. Uh, f4 d4. Uh, sorry, we take twice and then uh, knight f6. So Murtos was playing very fast. I don't know. How- I mean, beyond H three, I did not have any special preparation. Mm. So th- this is the point I started to think. You know, uh, what is to be done? Okay. And uh, uh, just a second. Yeah. By the way, all those who are asking which game is this, uh, white is Surya and black is Kazgalaev. Uh, and uh, yeah, so knight f six was the last move. Yeah. So uh, the first thing is okay. Uh, Ideally, you want to play c3 at some point. You know, restricting this uh, c6 knight. It's very typical. So that's what I did. Uh, knight takes d5. Now a quick question: What happens for bishop into d5? Okay. So black, uh, black to move here. What should black play here? <clears throat> and and I believe e bishop into d5 looks the most natural in a way because your bishop is very strong here. Exerting True. pressure on both diagonals. True. So how should uh, black continue here? I'm I'm also going to think because you know you know there are very few sessions when I do live, when I am also learning so much and and that's one of the main reasons I love Surya and on the stream because I also get to learn a lot from this. So I'm going I'm going to think as to what should. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking Surya at some aggressive intentions like Bishop H3, Rook F3, but nothing really works. Uh, no, no. But, Maybe you should think same aggression on the other side. Ah, oh, on the on the. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, yeah, got it, got it. I found it. Uh, yeah. Let's see yeah. who, how many have got it. Uh, Kushal Chess has got it. Debarshi Mukherjee has got it. Shiv Shom, Ilam Parthi, Jayesh Shah. Nihilesh, Akshay Mohan says Knight B8. Akshay, maybe you have a more active move rather than Knight B8. Hari Nanda, Mitesh, Sundrit, everyone. Yeah, very tactically alert crowd, uh, and they have found it. Knight into A5, Rook A5, and C6. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. So I played um, E D5. This was part of the plan. Mm-hmm. He played Knight B8. Oh, this is a very interesting moment. Uh, again, it uh, it is completely uh, depending on your taste. So some some of the natural move could be bishop d3. Let's say it's a very standard move. Yeah. So here I was, I, I as far as I remember, I thought for five minutes, and my thought thought process has got nothing to do with uh, you know some particular move. If you just go back uh, one move, like with the bishop c4. So I was thinking in in the following direction, yeah. 
uh, the, actually that's how i came to this move okay so i the, the way i am looking at this position that i have a in future i have a queen side majority right like like queen side plan i'll play b4 c4 and you know then think about playing uh, maybe b5 or c5 at some point yeah now let's talk about the pieces so i think my two bishops are better than his two bishops yeah because his bishops are not not having any aim agreed like this his c8 bishop is not looking anywhere his e7 bishop is not looking anywhere so even if we change all the pieces and just keep to you know we get to bishop on end game even then it is me it is white who will play yeah he will get c4 b4 and then think about b5 or c5 so bishops are the piece that we should never exchange here okay. there is there is no, no there is no need same goes with uh, major pieces also like uh, i think uh, it is white who has more uh, prospect in general but then i realized that it is actually his knight on b8 which can cause me some trouble because this knight is coming to f4 pretty much directly knight d7 knight f6 knight h5 some day yeah? knight h5 probably immediately it's not happening but you know with some queen e8 or something this knight will one day it'll land up to f f4 yeah and i didn't see a big prospect for my own knight so i took three moves to change f3 knight with b8 knight my god uh, but i see this very nice square for your knight well then he will obviously challenge and, and then we'll change the knight yeah and then then i thought once once you take off the knights from you know these two position uh, this particular position if you just simply eliminate the knights and somehow if you can avoid you know black playing bishop g5 or changing the other bishop that is what white wants yeah, yeah. white ideally you know you would uh, like to keep both the bishops so i played knight d2 here what a brilliant what a brilliant idea like you know when you see this game on chess base like you don't you don't have any commentary and you see the moon knight d2 it's like okay you see knight wants to go to e4 but when you listen to surya and you understand that he wants to exchange the knights not the bishops and then he wants to start pushing the queen side pawns that's very instructive actually surya i'm thinking after listening to you if i was black i would have actually thought of playing move bishop g5 does it make sense I, I yeah yeah i think so i also felt either bishop g5 or bishop f5 is what he should have played probably even start with bishop f5 and give the bishop instead of the knight mm. i would and then you play bishop d7 at some point give the bishop rather keep the knight and then put the knight on f6 and somewhere yeah although i would still prefer white yeah yeah white looks preferable i mean again i am not claiming knight d2 is the best move maybe bishop d3 is simply better choice but okay it's just a one way of thinking yeah so he plays knight d7 knight e4 my opponent clearly underestimated uh, the the strategical the strategy somya <laughs> <laughs> somya we i should call her on the stream <laughs> yeah knight f6 by the way we have we have a viewer uh, his name is rakshit singh and he's a young boy who started playing chess in this lockdown has been improving very quickly and he says listening to surya sir for the first time really so informative uh, and i think uh, this is true for everyone who's who's listening to surya for the first time i think my first time listening to surya was somewhere 4 or 5 years ago and since then i have been a big fan of him uh, the way he explains stuff and and now i'm able to actually show you guys what he is like and that's why i i heartily recommend everyone to please subscribe to his channel you know <clears throat> the link is in the description please please do that because he is going to explain much more uh, in the days to come so yeah here i took on f6 yeah bishop f6 and this is a very important moment like i achieved this is what i was also calculating Mm. and it is very important that you have to stop bishop g5 you cannot allow this there is no, there is no way black should get this chance yeah what should white play so white to move here guys what should you play here uh there is one question by hari nanda and also by someone uh, here who says isn't black's light squared bishop better than white's light squared bishop as the pawn on d5 is fixed on light square very very interesting question 
well if you look from one perspective yes but uh, eventually at some point black will like white will start uh, you know playing uh, c4 b4 and uh, maybe b5 at some point while the c8 bishop will only be active if black can do something on king side right otherwise it is just looking at uh, empty diagonal mm. and also very important like the next move this particular move is very important in the game okay so white to move let's see okay we have some uh, suggestions jayanta paul says queen h5 gaurang says bd3 uh, arko prabha banik says queen bd3 queen h5 and bd3 these are the two main moves which are being suggested yeah bishop d3 is a better way to stop because queen h5 will unnecessarily allow g6 and so on bishop d3 also stops bishop g5 because there is queen h5 aha uh -huh. and also h6 doesn't really work because queen g6 yeah queen g6 sure so bishop d3 he played g6 threatening bg5 oh, threatening bishop g5 exactly so now again uh, again when i am playing knight d2 i have to calculate this because it's really important to stop bishop g5 so now there is a nice simple way bishop h6 you attack the exchange so if he plays bishop g7 you come back bishop b3 uh, just put bishop g7 yeah I come back bishop b3 and uh, this way you after you play queen d2 there is no way he can change the dark square bishop yeah when he plays bishop f5 you tuck in uh, your bishop to f1 <laughs> no, not exchanging at all costs yeah and now if you look at the position you will play queen d2 c4 b4 you know then think whether to play c5 or b5 it's uh, such a pleasant position yeah yeah absolutely so in the game he played uh, rook f7 this is very uh, subtle moment here so again he's threatening bishop g5 so i have to play queen d2 okay and now he plays bishop f5 yeah so now we should ask the I, viewers to think here or uh -huh. or you you would explain and first explain or first you would like them to think okay think <laughs> <laughs> well because i have seen the move and i am simply confused as to why surya did this so try to think what would you play here as white and then when surya actually explains it it will be much more instructive for you <clears throat> so white to move what do you do here is the question Okay. Ah, everyone saying bishop e2. I mean, how come they are so smart? I don't know. For my 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 idea would have been directly bishop f1. I mean, why to block the rook on e1? So, yeah, I yeah. mean, there is equal like some people are saying bishop e2, some bishop f1. Because there is g5, yeah, and for g5 you need bishop h5. Oh, tactics, tactics. Yeah, so so if bishop, e2, bishop f1 then g5 and somehow this bishop... i would like also i would also like to add one more thing like after bishop f5 let's say if i play bishop e4 yeah this is like changing just this bishop and still retaining uh the other bishop is not so not disaster but the problem here is yeah if he takes i think i'm okay this is fine this i would i wouldn't mind playing this i mean white is still better but he'll play bishop g7 and now you are uh, missing this bishop e3 because e4 is sort of uh, hanging ah. like you, you can play bishop e3 and now you have to play bishop uh, yeah bishop takes e4 and now you have to play bishop g5 but then again he plays bishop f6 and he changes both bishops yeah, which we and, don't want and, and you lose your uh, edge sort of here yeah yeah to to a large extent uh, we lose our uh, initiative you know uh, surya we also have in the chat abhijit gupta who suggested bishop e2 so uh and he says chess is 99% tactics do you agree with him yeah yeah absolutely i mean all this strategical thing like for instance even this move yeah bishop e2 yeah. if you don't see g5 coming then uh, what is the point of it doing any kind of strategy hmm. sure so now now there was a very interesting moment so he played queen e7 yeah so 
so now he is in a way threatening at some point yeah to play rook g8 and g5 yes. and then and then when you play bishop h5 he might have some kind of rook g6 at some point because your bishop on h6 could be you know uh, it is tricky yeah yeah so 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 one thing is clear he played queen e7 he wants his rook on g8 he wants to play g5 and uh, now to counter that you need another piece and that is how i remember i was also playing this game entire game pretty fast because moves are very natural mm. so it's all about you know like in a way restricting your opponent like you just first you understand what he wants to do and then you restrict okay so uh, guys here it's white to move and you need to come up with an idea to restrict this idea uh, of black which is g5 rook g8 and rook g6 uh, sorry not first g not first rook g5 g8, first bro. rook g8 then g5 and rook g6 so white to move what would you do here okay okay so aha it's someone thinks like me you know someone said rook a4 they want to put the rook that way and bring the rook on the other side but i don't know which square is there on the king side for the rook after a4 rook a4 is also very interesting i remember even computers top choice was rook a4 uh, okay it's, it's it's a very interesting move uh, i had a different idea i had like c4 c4 the idea yeah the idea is first of all not to show what is my idea because c4 when i play c4 probably opponent is thinking i want to play b4 or something so he Ex plays rook g8 exactly and actually this is the reason why i mean in the chat some uh, shiv shom said rook a3 but it's it's less uh, i mean it shows Subtle. the cards it shows the cards yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it shows the cards c4 rook g8 and now rook a3 so this way i completely discourage uh, any kind of g5 and uh, rook g6 x and sec because i will always have rook, rook g3 at the end and i'll just pick up the like yeah i can just take and play rook g3 let's say yeah and pick up the g5 pawn so rook a3 he played uh, now he is slightly desperate he played uh, bishop h4 which is understandable now he is threatening g5 so i come back bishop e3 yeah he played bishop c8 this for me was the toughest move in the game really uh -huh. we have some champions here let me let me see oh. <laughs> okay this is for this is for all this is for all all, all the audience including uh, abhi ji setu yeah. setu padmini vishnu and i think many more uh, top players who are not commenting i don't know but also for the young talents uh, there white to move here think so uh, yeah so one thing i can uh, add is like um, first i thought if i can get my bishop to g2 like if i get g3 and bishop to g2 then it will just seal everything like then my king side is uh, it's like a it's like a fortress and while i can you know slowly start on queen side later okay so this was my original idea now uh, but uh, there are some issues with uh, all with ev pretty much everything okay. so we'll see what this, what what they come up with abhijit uh, is asking why not g3 instead of bishop e3 so here instead of bishop e3 why not g3 i'm thinking yeah sure uh first of all can i take bishop h3 okay i have to take this right oh yeah now let's say uh, queen h4 and uh, if i go rook g3 would it work oh, Or... yeah no probably rook g3 works you're right i think um hang on why was this not uh ah no yeah here he will play bishop f6 bishop f6 back and then and then maybe he wants to play h4 yeah mm -hmm. but h4 g5 now g5 
And now bishop h5, bg6. No, no now I have bishop g6 at least. Yeah. It's a, maybe doable. Yeah. But again, I like for me, I did not want to give any counter. Like I did not want to uh, give even the slightest counter here. So, so we are looking at this position right now and the moves that have been suggested are b3 which doesn't make sense c5 mm -hmm. uh, b4 uh -huh. g4 c5 wow. g3 wow, wow. f4 i i'm still waiting for someone to say what you have played but i don't think there's anyone uh, okay in, in the meantime we can look at uh, two options that i did not play and why i did not play so first was g3 this was my first uh, reaction uh, respond let's say i wanted to play g3 in this position because okay if you move the bishop then i play bishop f1 and after that i think there is no game uh, here uh, if you can achieve this then uh, then it's very good after but this there is no game you mean to say it's one-sided completely yeah like black has no plans you will put I, your bishop i mean yeah i'm not saying like white is uh, winning or something but you know black has no counter and uh, White can do whatever he wants. It's, this is a position that uh, White can dream about. Okay. Yeah, like just no counter. But G3, there is Bishop takes H3. G H4, Queen H4. And uh, yeah, the problem is now I, I have to get my Rook to. Uh, this g5 yeah because he will simply play g4 g5 g4 g3 if he if he gets a chance or even rook f8 there are many ideas which he has hmm. i actually thought about bishop a7 here like carpoon zikar <laughs> carpoon only the move is the same rest everything is different <laughs> yeah rest everything is different no because you want to get your rook to g3 if you get rook g3 and bishop e3 then you are very solid yeah but something like b6 doesn't work yeah because of rook g3 yeah but same thing you can do with rook a8 he can simply play rook 8. Uh. I actually, I remember I saw this. Rook into h3, queen into h3, bishop e3. But okay, why should I get here? And this is better for white. I don't think so. I think black has enough counter here. Mm. And okay, he has got two pawns also. And also, why would you play this move? Why would you get here? Yeah, yeah. So I thought instead of g3, I should play bishop f1. So play bishop f1. Now I'm threatening g3 and bishop g2. Then I get my dream position. Okay. But suddenly, suddenly it occurred to me he can play g5. Ah, g5, g3, g4 maybe? Yeah, exactly. Ooh. g4 and gh4, queen h4. It's black who will win now. Wow. I was just completely killing. You know, rook f3 is coming. Like there is no coordination of pieces. Unbelievable. So then I dropped this entire plan. So then I realized, you know, like I cannot get uh, g3 and all. But let's look at this position. If he plays g5, next move. Let's say I play, I play some pass. Yeah, let's say play b4. Okay. Now he plays g5. Hmm. So I play bishop g4. And okay, takes takes. And okay, he may play something like rook f8. Let's say. Rook f8. Yeah. Yeah, and then again, this f2 is attacked. Like, I'm I'm not in time with uh, c5. Again, I have to waste one move on uh, on this pawn. Now, go back to 24th move, bishop c8. So, all my pieces, my bishop on e3 is doing a fantastic job. My bishop on e2 is blocking everything. Queen on d2 is stopping bishop g5. Rook on a3, third rank, I have complete uh, control. So the only piece that is not in optimal square was the rook on e1. So I played rook f1. Here. <laughs> rook f1. What a move. What a move. You know, you know, this stops everything. Now if he plays g5, I have bishop g4. And I'm just overprotected there. Yeah, bishop g4, hg4. And now after rook f8, I can already start playing c5. Yeah, I don't even need that. Yeah, just c5 and then, you know, just queen c2, rook a1. Like it's collapsing this bishop on uh, h4 will fall so so like something like dc uh... bring the rook to a1 back 
Okay. And next, yeah, next G three will happen at some point. Oh, okay. You want to trap that bishop? Hmm. Yeah. So now let's say he does not play G five. Yeah. Let's say if he plays H five. Okay. Then you do nothing because uh, G five is not a threat. Only if he plays some, uh, you know, radical move like uh, trying to defend, uh, protect the pawn with uh, rook eight seven or something, then you can again play queen d one. Like nothing is happening on uh, king side anymore. Wow. So so here maybe just I can just play probably now b four or yeah b four and c five yeah b four is good enough. I mean, this move is just like solidifying the position, and this was somehow a slight weakness, and you protect it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, basically, it's just discouraging all his uh, kingside attack. And again, like as I said, out of doing nothing, yeah, like uh, yeah, yeah, with the rook on f1 and with all these pieces, uh, there is no active plan for black. <laughs> Art of doing nothing is not easy. That that much I can say. It's it's tougher than doing something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So no, because our gen also in life, I think our general impulse is like what I am, what I am going to do, what I am going to say. Yeah. Uh, this retro thinking is uh, difficult. Yeah. Like we know Hari Vidit, they're like the master of this in. In in this retro thinking, retro like thinking. What what do you mean? Like you? No, I mean this profile axis. Yeah, like what my opponent wants, how to stop that. You know, there are there are category. Uh, there are players like, if, for instance, uh, Abhijit Gupta. He is also into. He falls into this category. Yeah, like he plays. Uh, you know, slow positional chess and so on. But uh, many players are very direct. I yeah. think let's. Let's say Adiban say to me, we are we are generally more direct players. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so. And there is also uh, Abhijit who suggests instead of Rook F one, Rook C three. Also, I think yeah, I think this is also fine. Like to play for C five, but um, I have uh, a very strong move. I must say Rook C three. Hmm. But with Rook F one, I simply felt that uh, all these things I have, I have Rook C three B four. These are not running anywhere. Yeah. But once I play rook f1, uh, my opponent does not know like how to attack, what to do. Sure, sure. sure. Like in uh, once my karate teacher told me, yeah, like uh, I remember he was giving some karate demonstration, and uh, when I was much younger, he used to tell me, you know, like punch on my stomach. His stomach is like very hard, and you know, like all this six packs and all. Mm -hmm. So in my childhood, I used to do that, and uh, he would just stand still. So very recently, once again. Uh, We were uh, doing this demonstration, and he said, "So I was doing some demonstration with him, and he said, 'Surya, punch on my, you know, stomach as hard as you can.' I was a little bit shocked because you know he used to do this with me when I was much younger, and now you know, like fully grown up and having more strength, and it's also like okay, I have done karate for such long, and I was like, 'Are you sure you want me to punch with full force?' Hmm. So he's like, 'Yeah, punch with uh, all your strength.'" So I went and punched him with all my strength. Yeah, like full force. I punched him, punched him on his on his stomach, and he just stood there. He did nothing. Then after second punch, uh, like he started demonstrating, you know, how to move, how to block, and so on. So I asked him, why didn't you move after like the first punch? Why did you, why did you take the punch? Then he gave me a very nice example. He said he said, whatever is your opponent's strength, whatever is your opponent's biggest strength. Hmm. If you can withstand that, hmm. then your opponent does not know what to do. <laughs> like I hit him with full force, and then nothing happens. It's like so sucking he... away the willpower of uh, like once you hit with full force and nothing happens to him, you you're like what to do next? Yeah, what to do next? Like imagine like also in tennis, yeah, like somebody serves with his best serve and you just give a return, like or or his best smash and you return. So then they don't know what to do. Yeah, so that's also fantastic. Yeah. I I must tell the viewers, Surya is uh, very good at martial arts. Uh, he is uh, black belt in karate. Am I right? Surya? No, no, I, no, 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 no. I was I was brown belt. I could not continue. Ah, brown belt in. Uh, so just shows the kind of discipline he has, uh, and that also, I mean, uh, sort of translated into his chess. Okay. Oh, rook f1 here. So he played rook f8, 
and I played. Uh, finally, I see that there there are no threats. There are no plans. Absolutely nothing is going on for black. Yeah, no more prophylaxis, and now you can play. Yeah, so now I played B four, and I think somewhere here, Murtas uh, Kasgaliev he got a little bit frustrated because uh, he's also a player who is looking for you know tricks and something direct, and uh, eventually. I did not even had to play C5 or B5 in this game because the, I remember during the game I was thinking like okay let the situation come then I will think whether to break on with B5 or with C5 but here he got uh, a little bit impatient hmm. and he played H6 which is a blunder I mean objectively white is clearly better but okay this just finishes the game so bishop takes H6 bishop F2 king H1 Rook g8 he played, and bishop g5. I think he simply overlooked uh, that after queen e8 there is bishop f6 check. Oh, that would have been such a nice finish. Uh, yeah, and, and he he saw this and then queen f8. Yeah, then he played queen f8, and then I think piece is going anyway. So rook f3. So he takes rook f3, bishop oh, f3. This is a nice tactic though. I mean, it's like an x-ray. Uh, so the bishop is going to be lost. If you move the bishop some, somewhere, say d4, then the rook is hanging. And if you take the rook here, uh, which, which is, what, is he what, did. what happened in the game, then bishop f3 and there's a discovered attack. Maybe that could come. Yeah. Out. So bishop d4. Yeah, and bishop e2. So now bishop f6 check is coming again. He played uh, bishop f5. And g4, bishop e4 check, king h2. Yeah, and then it is pretty much forced. Queen so e8, queen e8, check. Yeah, bishop, yeah. And queen g5, queen f8, I think he played. Yeah. And here, yeah, bishop e7. The problem is if it is queen g7, let's say. Then I think I have, uh, yeah, queen h4, queen h6, rook f7 takes and bishop f8 rook g7 takes and bishop f8 yeah nice finish yeah so yeah in the game he played bishop e3 and easiest is queen e3 and queen takes e4 and he resigned yeah he resigned yeah what a game so, so as you can see like i wanted to play c5 and b5 but i didn't have to somehow <laughs> it was yeah. it was enough to just keep the pawns in the best position and yeah. uh, he he self destructed because anyway he saw that this would come in and put him in grave difficulty so he tried to do something before that but it just didn't work you yeah. you were so brilliant with the art of doing nothing uh, in this game but so yeah. yeah can I, can i say like the art of doing nothing is more like art of stopping the opponent from doing what he wants to do yeah of course i mean again art of doing nothing could also be like you know you do nothing and just sleep so that's that's not the point but yeah. uh, so so in a way like uh, when we enjoy something it it is not hard work anymore yeah right it just it just comes it's it's like a flow so that that flow should be there somehow yeah yeah well Ab Arko Prabha uh, Banik said frustration made blunders. Uh, Omkar Chakradev says wow, lovely. Shiv Shom says amazing game once again. Uh, Mayur says super super game and this was one not at all drawish opening. Uh, very interesting. Ilam Party another nice game. Akshay Mohan what a amazing game. This game was so precise and positional and the previous game it felt like Magnus was playing grinding in sort of drawish positions. Kushal well, Chess says very instructive game. I think Surya is brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, like as I said, it's also a matter of style. Yeah, like uh, for me to be honest, uh, these things uh, did not come naturally. And again and again, I have to take at least two players' name here: Hari and Leko. <laughs> uh, when when I started working with them, then this is not something that that is natural for me at all. Yeah. Like for me. Attack and combination. This is much more. It comes much more naturally. Like if you have to, if you give me, you know, one second per move, probably every move I'll be attacking. But this is something that I had to kind of slowly develop. 
yeah yeah and and you have developed that and with your attacking style bringing in this uh, strategic play as saumya please uh, see yeah, this yeah. game <laughs> yeah it it uh, just makes you such a universal player and that's why i truly believe that uh, surya um, he's now what 36 37 right now uh, and uh, he still i believe has so much of chess in him uh, we should we should be expecting him to soon uh, go up on the rating scale in the days to come but yes i know surya you're not thinking about that so i am not yeah. going to <laughs> also also i am not allowed to think my coach vishnu is also seeing this stream yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. vishnu is here <laughs> vishnu nothing nothing i'm not putting pressure on your student but <laughs> it's just that i truly believe that uh, with such play yeah it he will do it in the days to come uh, padmini raut says amazing game epsha kashyap awesome game hope to see surya sir streaming more often with sagar sir well guys if you want to uh, see more of surya then first of all on 4th of july at 1:30 pm he will be in conversation with levon aronian this levon aronian is uh one of the best chess players that the world has ever seen in fact gary kasparov has said that the world is a better place when levon when... aronian uh, is playing well you know when he plays yeah, yeah. You know, chess so he is going to come on surya stream on 4th of july at 1:30 pm and also tomorrow before that happens there is also another stream that surya has which is called the copycat and this is on 3rd of july at 6:30 pm that is tomorrow what is copycat surya so um, so every topic i'm trying to come up with uh, something that is uh, a bit interesting and you know what is uh, very challenging for me is like when i'm streaming i know there are you know like all top uh, like top indian players are watching as well as there are you know players uh, unrated players who love chess they are watching so the toughest job is to come up with something first of all which uh, let's say you know setu or abhijit gupta or adiban or vishnu they will not know and it has to be interesting so that uh, they are watching at the same time you know the players who are who are playing chess let's say even just for hobby they are also finding it interesting so this is a when i started streaming i never imagined something like this could happen so it is really very challenging but uh, so every episode i have to come up with something where uh, where i have managed to you know keep my uh, audience uh, glued to their uh, the screen i i I've always imagined this happening when you would start streaming and I, and if there was someone who could do this job perfectly it's surya because his games have so much high quality content like you see saw the games like rook f1 and all these decisions uh, bishop e2 but he can also explain them exceedingly well and this is a quality which very few people have in the world of chess and that's why guys please make sure that you subscribe to surya's channel and follow it diligently if you want to become a better chess player and here uh, the copycat concept where he's going to show some ideas played in yester years being applied in modern chess is truly a, a great great theme that's going to come up By the way Vishnu says Sagar don't ruin my work. <laughs> <laughs> well well you know if Vishnu can give a give a lecture on opening preparation I'm sure I am capable of uh, giving lecture on strategy. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Tomorrow we will see maybe you know someday we'll see Abhijit Gupta uh, streaming on attacking chess. Hey. And Adiban streaming <laughs> and Adiban streaming on end game, so we will we will get all the extremes Abhijit, very quickly. Actually, Abhijit just said a few minutes ago. Look at my recent games. I am attacking a lot. In analysis, <laughs> <laughs> this is some serious serious <laughs> trash talking <laughs> going on. <laughs> but uh, all right fantastic surya thank you so much uh, you. for for coming in uh, and as always uh, i i know i'm saying this a uh, lot of times but truly there are very few streams in which i am able to learn so much uh, from from the uh, 
person who's giving it and and whenever you come on stream i i learn personally learn a lot i don't know when i will use it i i am not even playing chess anymore but just that it feels like whenever i'll do that uh, it will be useful well, you don't have to do that the whole concept was out of doing nothing right <laughs> I should I should just now go outside and relax a bit you know. Yeah. Just, just chill, yeah, take it easy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Guys, in the chat, thank you so much. Uh and uh, <laughs> Abhijit says so subscribe to Surya's channel if you want to chat with top Indian players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, and guys, please make sure that you like this stream uh, and so that many more people can watch it. And thank you to all the moderators who removed a lot of lot of uh, chats which were coming in, which were not at all related to this stream uh, and for keeping it clean. I think it was very enjoyable. Thanks to yeah, all this, of you. This, this, I think, is also uh, generally, you know what, uh, uh, regarding this uh, spamming, I felt... Uh, you know, like let's say Federer wins or Nadal wins an event. So we can come and say, you know, Federer won, Nadal won. But it has got no relevant to what is going on on the stream. So for me personally, it is kind of insult. Like let's say when uh, Anand is saying something, it does not matter what, uh, you know, uh, Virat Kohli did or, uh, you know, what uh, Federer did. Yeah. Like if you, if you want to root about, uh, root for them, you do it where it is relevant, right? So, to some extent, I feel it is uh, it is showing disrespect and for no need. Yeah, absolutely. Because also, because also, let's let's put it this way: like, uh, be it uh, uh, be it Vidit or be it uh, Hari Krishna or uh, you know uh, Federer or uh, any other sportsman, be it uh, Messi, we have huge respect for them. Like I respect, uh, you know, let's say Vidit as a person, as a player also. But when some other stream is going on, there is no relevant. Or even you are talking about, uh, be it some uh, comedian or, you know, political person or uh, film fraternity, there is no absolutely no relevance. So why do something that is uh, senseless? Yeah. And I'm sure uh, view, our viewers are like intelligent, right? They have their own sense. So it's a common sense. Like, why would you do something that has uh, that has no no value? True, true. And I also agree that when when a player like Surya is is showing his games and he's putting in so much energy and effort to explain these subtle points of play, it is extremely important that people who are following this are are riveted and are trying to understand what he's saying and making unnecessary comments would not would not serve the purpose so uh, as as also uh, in the chat a lot of people Siddharth Jacob says Surya sir is right uh, Abhijit Gupta as always uh, has has his funny humor here he says Djokovic is also a great player yeah so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Siddharth exactly being... exactly that's my point like what is the point of you know like talking which has absolutely no relevance yeah yeah this is what he, he I think he made a very beautiful point like, I don't see, you know, like, uh, people are not talking about Djokovic or anything. They are talking about uh, some tournament where, you know, some other guys are playing. It doesn't make sense. I, I, I actually, you know what, I feel people who are capable of thinking, they don't do this. Yeah. Only people who spam there who are not uh, capable of thinking. And they are just showing their own uh, own intelligence level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. And also... Uh... Everyone's now waiting for your next stream, Surya, which is uh, with Aronian. And I believe this is going to be uh, a great, great occasion for the chess community. Thanks for bringing in such high quality content, not just uh, on your stream, but also on Chess Base India and coming here often. I hope that we'll be able to meet very soon again. Uh, and until then, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll see you soon, Surya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sagar. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.